Welcome to Art History with Jackie. Today, we're going to be talking about Sandro Botticelli, the Italian painter from the Renaissance. His paintings have been seen to represent the linear grace of early Renaissance painting. He is best known for painting mythological subjects. Botticelli was born in the city of Florence. He lived in the same area all his life. Because of his father's occupation as a gold beater, Botticelli would have come into contact with a range of artists. Giorgio Vasari, in his Life of Botticelli, reported that Botticelli was initially trained as a goldsmith. From around 1461, Botticelli was apprenticed to Fra Filippo Lippi, one of the leading Florentine painters and a favorite of the Medici. It was from Lippi that Botticelli learned how to create intimate compositions with beautiful, melancholic figures. When Lippi passed away, Botticelli opened his own workshop. His first apprentice was Filippino Lippi, son of his former master. Botticelli's earliest surviving altarpiece is a large Sacra Conversazione of about 1470 to 1472, now in the Uffizi. The painting shows Botticelli's early mastery of composition, with the figures arranged with an easy naturalness in a closed architectural setting. Another work from this period is the Saint Sebastian in Berlin, which was painted in 1474. The almost nude body is very carefully drawn and anatomically precise, reflecting the young artist's close study of the human body. The delicate winter landscape, referring to the saint's feast day in January, is inspired by Netherlandish painting. The adoration of the Magi for Santa Maria Novella, now in the Uffizi, was singled out for praise by Vasari and was in a much visited church, so spreading Botticelli's reputation. This piece contains the portrait of Cosimo de' Medici, his sons Piero and Giovanni, and his grandsons Lorenzo and Giuliano. There are also portraits of the donor and of Botticelli himself. He's down in the right-hand corner. In 1481, Pope Sixtus summoned Botticelli and other prominent Florentine and Umbrian artists to fresco the walls of the newly completed Sistine Chapel. This large project was to be the main decoration of the chapel. Of course, now these frescoes are overshadowed by Michelangelo's ceiling. Botticelli differs from his contemporaries in imposing a more insistent triptych-like composition, dividing each of his scenes into a main central group with two flanking groups at the sides, showing different incidents, like in this fresco. In the 1480s, Botticelli began focusing more on mythological subjects. The masterpieces Primavera, circa 1482, and The Birth of Venus, circa 1485, are not a pair, but are inevitably discussed together. Both are currently in the Uffizi. They are among the most famous paintings in the world and icons of the Italian Renaissance. As depictions of subjects from cla classical mythology portrayed on a very large scale, they were virtually unprecedented in Western art. All show dominant and beautiful female figures in an idyllic world of feeling with a sexual element. Their beauty has been characterized as exemplifying grace. Botticelli painted only a small number of mythological subjects, but these are his most famous works. The pictures feature Botticelli's linear style at its most effective, emphasized by the soft continual contours and pastel colors. The Primavera and Birth were both owned by Lorenzo di, di Pierfrancesco di Medici. Three of these four large mythologies feature Venus, a central figure in Renaissance Neoplatonism. Botticelli's influence on the course of art history and popular culture has been significant across the centuries in a way rivaled by few artists. Renowned art historian Giorgio Vasari saw Botticelli as the epitome of the golden age of art, achieved during the time of the great patron of the arts, Lorenzo de' Medici. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.